Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Today we're going to go over how you can analyze or how you can separate your best and worst performers versus budget and how you might actually go about visualizing this. So there's a few things. First of all, you've got to actually build the data model. Then you've got to get the correct DAX calculations and then we've got to work out a way to visualize it. So that's what I want to cover today. Um, because this is a really common scenario uh, and it might not always be against budget it could be say a benchmark it could be say a forecast etc but the sim similar similar techniques or, a, or similar concepts could be applied to actually achieve this so what i've done is i have uh, i've got some budgets for uh, a particular year in this case it's um, two, 2016 so this is this is historic data historic data set but I've got actuals, which is at a daily level, and I've got budgets, which is at a yearly level. And I've gone through and applied the budgeting um, techniques in around how you can match up data at different granularities. Um, so let's run through that first of all, uh, and then we can work out how the steps I took post that to actually deliver this sort of visualization. So the key thing, if you've watched any of my budgeting videos that I've got on Enterprise DNA TV is you've got to work out the budget allocation, okay? That's that's working out some logic or, or, or an allocation algorithm that allows you to allocate, say, a yearly budget at a daily level. And so it could be a, a monthly budget at a, a at a daily level, but in this case, it's actually a yearly budget at a daily level. And so I've actually created a number of variables here that enable me to ultimately have this quite simple calculation. So if you think about how do you allocate something that is a yearly number across every single day, well, you go, uh, if it was um, on the, at a daily context, you would go one divided by, say, 365 times the total budget so that's how you would get the budget allocation and that's exactly what i've done and all i've done is i've broken out each individual element inside of this calculation into variables and so these are the calcs that go into that that, that um, these are the variables that go into this this calculation okay so i've gone deeper into this in another video so i won't cover it uh, too much more now but essentially what i've done is i've then been able to go okay well, what were my total sales and then what was my budget allocation and so with those two numbers i can now work out well what is my results to budget and so um, by doing that i was able to, to run another calculation or at least i could branch out into this calculation and then all i had to do is I mean it's pretty simple you just go total sales minus budget per product and then what you're able to do is you're then we're then able to see okay well but via city how have we gone? How have we gone versus our budget? So pretty effective. So once once you actually get the, the hard part here is really the budget allocation. So once you get that sorted, uh, then from there it's actually not too difficult. It's just really sales minus, minus that budget allocation. Okay, so now the key um, the key thing here, the key thing here is that our budgets, right, our budgets were at a city, uh, at a city granularity. So uh, what we had to do to be able to uh, filter both the sales table and the budget table at exactly the same time as we needed to break out the cities, which we've done. And then when we filter something here, it flows down through this table and hits the sales table. And then it also filters the budget data table as well. And so in this table, I've got that uh, that city names dimension. And that enables me to go total sales budget and then find the actual uh, actuals versus product budgets or I think this is actually um, not product budgets but actually just general budgets so um, so from here from here now we want to separate our best and worst right and so this is so and I wanted to see okay well I've got my total sales here on my x-axis and my budget allocation on my y-axis so I can actually see okay well how do we actually go versus our budget but without this performance but without this legend it's hard to see if you think about it or, or what's good and what's bad so we want to we want to actually make it really obvious really clear um, who are our good performers and who are our bad performers now we can't actually do it without having some additional work here because that dimension that's best and worst dimension it doesn't actually exist in our data model so there's no way for us to actually place that filter on so we need we needed to actually we needed to actually create it we needed to create 
this um, this dimension. So that's exactly what I did. And I did it with um, some some pretty simple, well, there's a bit to it, but um, but the logic here, the logic here enables us to work out, well, is it a, is it a, is it above um, zero or is it below zero? And so what I've done is I've gone and calculated, or I've placed a, um, used the calculate statement to go and work out which are the ones, uh, which are the cities which have sales above zero and uh, well, performance to budget above zero or below zero, and then I've classified them poor or good. And so now that I create this dimension, and that's a key thing, I can then use this as a filter, right? And so all I need to do is then drag this into the legend and you see how it actually now breaks out. It actually breaks out these um, these cities in terms of good and bad. So we can really quickly identify, okay, well here are the bad uh, here are the uh, cities that are under budget, and these are the ones that are above. And so that I really like that visualization technique because it's 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 much harder to identify these sort of things. And this, when you're doing this sort of comparison visualization and scatter charts without breaking out um, the different things in colors. And so adding those extra dim dimensions make it much more effective. And then what you can also do is you can then actually use this performance versus budget, um, you know, in a visualization too, if you think about it. And this enables you to just drill in very quickly to those top performers versus those bottom performers. So that's what I wanted to show you um, today in today's video. So you know, there's there's a little bit to that, a little bit to that. Obviously, the budget allocation that's key, getting the data model right, and then um, overlaying some of these um, additional dimensions or d additional supporting columns to 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 make your visualization stand out a little bit or make them clearer. Um, bringing those all of those techniques in together make for a really effective report and really effective analysis. So good luck with implementing uh, these uh, these techniques or, or this particular technique in some of your own analysis. Just as a reminder, you can actually download uh, this resource. Just just requires a small investment. You can you can find out where that is uh, in the description below. Okay, all the best and uh, good luck with this one.